Hi friends, I am Snehal and today we are going to talk about the four fundamental forces in nature. So all the forces that we can see in action around us and all the forces that we can't see, they all come from these four fundamental forces. So let's begin. So first on the list is our very familiar gravitational force. So let's suppose we have this object over here and it has some mass m1. So it feels a force of attraction, the gravitational force of attraction due to all of all other objects surrounding it. And this can be explained by using Newton's law of gravity. So Newton's law of gravity says that every object in the universe attracts every other object in the universe with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and it's inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Suppose we have another mass, another object with mass m2 over here. Then suppose the distance between them is r. So the force of attraction, the gravitational force of attraction between these two is given by the formula F equals to g times m1 into m2 over r squared. So g is the universal gravitational constant. Okay, so this is gravitational force and it has got some properties. So most surprising property is that the gravitational force which keeps us bound to the earth, which keeps moon revolving around earth, which keeps moon and earth revolving around sun in an orbit, it is by far the weakest force in the universe, okay? So, it is the weakest force. This is surprising, but it's true. Then here we can see that this force acts due to the masses of the objects, okay? If objects didn't have any mass, then the force between the objects could be zero. So, it acts by virtue of acts due to the mass. The next property, it follows inverse square law. So what do I mean by an inverse square law? This force is inversely proportional to R square. So as R goes on increasing, the force goes on decreasing. And if R goes on decreasing, the force will go on increasing. Okay, so it is inverse, uh, it follows inverse square law. All right, and the range of this force. So the range of gravitational force, we can actually think about it. The range of gravitational force must be infinite because we cannot think of the distances over which it doesn't act, all right? It acts between moon and earth. The distance is very large. It acts between sun and earth. The distance is even larger, very, very large. So the range of this force must be infinite. All right, then let's move on to the next force. And next force on the list is electromagnetic force. Now let's consider an electrically charged object. Okay, so we have this electrically charged particle. So charge on this particle, suppose Q. So this particle experiences force due to all other charged particles surrounding it. And this force is known as the electrostatic force. Okay, so let's suppose we have this particle having charge q1 and another particle over here having charge q2 then there is the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between these two and the force is given by formula f equals to some constant k times q1 into q2 over r squared okay so in last formula which describes gravity 
in Newton's gravitational law, if we just replace a constant and uh, masses, if we replace by charges, we get formula for electrostatic force. All right. But then if the charge is moving in some magnetic field, so we have this charged particle Q, which is moving in this magnetic field represented by these parallel lines with some velocity V. All right. And there is some angle between the magnetic field and this velocity. The angle is suppose theta. Then it experiences a force due to this magnetic field and the force is given by F equals to Q into V into B multiplied by sine of that angle theta. All right, Q is charged on charge on the particle. V is its velocity. The magnitude of velocity B is the magnitude of magnetic field and theta is the angle. So this force, the electrostatic force and electro uh, this force due to the magnetic field, it is called as the electromagnetic force. OK, so what is electromagnetic force? It is force experienced by charged particles in electric field. That means in vicinity of charges or in presence of other charges or in presence of the magnetic field. All right. So now let's look at some properties of electromagnetic force. So this force, the electromagnetic force is 10 raised to 36 times stronger, stronger than gravity. And this is a very big number. So electromagnetic force is very, very, very strong compared to gravity. But then you might ask that we feel the gravitational force in our day-to-day -day life, but we don't feel the electromagnetic force. Why? So the reason is that matter is mostly neutral. So if we consider one of the very small constituent of matter, for an example, if we consider an atom, so atom consists of a positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons. Okay. So the positive charge on the nucleus is exactly equal to the negative charge on these electrons. So most of the matter is neutral and we don't have any significant charges floating around to show the effect of the electromagnetic force. So that's why we feel the gravitational force, but we don't feel the effect of an electromagnetic force. All right. So then, so gravitational force acts by virtue of masses of the particles. The electromagnetic force acts by virtue of the charges, the electrical charges on the particles. Okay. So this force can be attractive or repulsive. So since the mass comes in only one variant, the gravitational force is always attractive, but charges come in two variants. They are either positive or negative. So there is force of repulsion between like charges, positive, positive or negative, negative. There is force of repulsion between them and there is force of attraction between unlike charges. All right. So this force can be attractive or repulsive. Okay. Again, uh, next property, what's the range of this force? So its range is also infinity. And finally, this force is also inversely proportional to R squared. So if distance goes on increasing, the force goes on decreasing. If distance decreases, the force increases. Okay. So then next move on to the next force. So next we discuss strong force or strong nuclear force. Okay, so let's consider this nucleus of some element from periodic table. So inside this nucleus, we have positively charged protons and neutrons, which are neutral. Okay, so these protons, they carry positive charges, right? So there must be some electrostatic force acting between them and they must be repelling each other. So how is it possible on Earth that these protons, which carry positive charges, and they are repelling each other and still they are sitting very comfortably, very comfortably next to each other in so much compact volume of a nucleus. 
So reason behind that is there exists a force which is even stronger than the electromagnetic force and it's always attractive, okay? So the strong nuclear force that we are going, we are talking about, it is 10 raised to two times or 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force and it's always attractive. So the strong nuclear force keeps these protons and neutrons bound to the volume of nucleus, okay? Bound with each other. So there exists a strong nuclear force and it is 10 raised to two times or 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force. That means it is 10 raised to 38 times stronger than the gravitational force. All right, so if this force is so strong, why don't we feel its effect? And the reason to that is obvious, it acts in very small volume of a nucleus, okay? So its range is very, very small. It is 10 raised to minus 15 meters, okay? That's approximately volume of the nucleus. The next property of this force is that it's charge independent, okay? So it is charge independent. So what do I mean by that is the force between proton and a proton is exactly equal to the force between proton and a neutron and it's equal to the force between neutron and a neutron. So this force acts equally between all nucleons. All right. So that's the strong nuclear force. And next and the last on the list is the weak nuclear force. Let's talk about the weak nuclear force. So it's not the weakest force in the universe. We have already discussed that the gravity is in fact the weakest force. So why the name weak? So the name weak is given because it is weaker in comparison to the other nuclear force, the strong nuclear force. So as far as strength is concerned, it is 10 raised to 25 times stronger compared to gravity than gravity, but it acts in very small volume, even smaller volume than that of the strong nuclear force. So its range is only 10 raised to minus 16 meters. All right. So it acts within the nucleus only, but what does it do? So it causes the radioactive elements to decay. So it causes the radioactive reactions. Let's see how. So this is the carbon-14 nucleus. It's unstable, it's radioactive. So it can decay to the nitrogen nucleus. So carbon-14, which has six protons and eight neutrons, it can decay to nitrogen-14, of course. So what happens in this case is, one of its neutron gets converted to a proton. Okay, so how does this have how does this happen? So let's consider this nucleus of carbon 14. So carbon 14 has six protons and eight neutrons, and due to this proton neutron imbalance, it is unstable and it might decay to nitrogen. Okay, so let's see how does this reaction happen. So this radioactive reaction is known as beta minus decay, and in this reaction, one of the neutrons of carbon-14 gets converted to a proton, okay? So see, look at this reaction, carbon-14, okay? It gets converted to nitrogen-14 and it emits one electron and one antineutrino, okay? So what happens actually is one of its neutron decays into a proton plus an electron and antineutrino and this happens because of the weak nuclear force. So it's weak nuclear force which drives this change of a neutron to a proton. All right. So we are not going into the details of how does this happen because it's very messy. But this is in short the story. So we discussed about four fundamental forces and we also discussed in what scenario do they act. So 
let us just once recall the relative strengths of these forces and the range. So let's recall the strength and the range. So if strength of gravity is considered to be 1, then on that scale, the weak nuclear force is 10 raised to 25. So it's 10 raised to 25 times stronger compared to gravity. The electromagnetic force is 10 raised to 36 times stronger compared to gravity. And the strong nuclear force is 10 raised to 38 times stronger compared to gravity. All right. Then what are the ranges? The range of gravitational force is infinite. The range of weak nuclear force is very small. It's very, very small. It's 10 raised to minus 16 meters. The range of electromagnetic force is again infinite and the range of strong nuclear force is 10 raised to minus 15 meters. So the weak nuclear force and the strong nuclear force they act on very small range and that's why we don't see their effect. So that's all I wanted to discuss in this class. See you in the next class.